The LGBTQ movement now controls virtually every elite institution in this country, including corporations. And they use this hashtag as well as love is love. Zero sugar, zero prejudice. And this campaign launched in Budapest. What was different is they used same sex couples. Politicians. Admiral Levine was in France rubbing shoulders with all of you people with Sam Britton. Sam Britton is a nuclear engineer who was recently appointed the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Spent Fuel and Waste Disposition in the Office of Nuclear Energy. And Hollywood. I mean, the real truth is those people are idiots. No matter where we look, the LGBTQ movement is now an inescapable part of our everyday lives. When was the last time you watched a series on television that did not have a gay character or that did not introduce a gay storyline? It just doesn't happen. I mean, you just, you can't turn on the TV without seeing it. Now you, now there are commercials and the commercials come out. And when the commercials are about, you see gay characters or, or, or gay couples in the commercials, they are everywhere, not everywhere, everywhere. It's beyond everywhere, right? Let's take a look at just how thoroughly the LGBTQ movement now dominates our culture. And then we'll talk about how Christians should respond. Marvel was once a source of relatively harmless, family-friendly entertainment. However, in recent years, almost every Marvel movie now promotes the LGBTQ agenda. The Eternals featured a gay kiss scene. The stunning and brave that um, Disney was for refusing to edit out the two men kissing. How stunning and brave and awesome they were because they were willing to forego that money, willing to take it on the chin and lose money. And the LGBTQ actor talked up just how important this scene was to the movie. Married to a gay superhero with a child. What does that mean to you as a gay man, a gay actor in this town, getting to do that in a Marvel movie? Beyond the dream come true, it's life-saving. I wish I had that when I was a kid growing up to see this. My God, like, I wish. Can you imagine how many lives is this is going to be saving? Kids, you know, young queer folk who are either being bullied, committing suicide, not seeing themselves being represented, and now they get to see this? The new Doctor Strange movie, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, features a lesbian character who has two moms. Um, my moms. And the new Thor movie, Love and Thunder, is described by Natalie Portman, the female lead of the movie, as the gayest Marvel movie ever. Natalie Portman loves that Disney's Thor 4 is, quote, the gayest Marvel movie ever. Valkyrie, the new leader of Asgard, is an openly bisexual character. Tessa Thompson finally confirmed her character Valkyrie is part of the LGBTQ2 plus community during the Hall H panel, following the announcement of Thor Love and Thunder. The extreme increase in LGBTQ characters and themes in Marvel movies is no surprise, given that Marvel now belongs to Disney. And Disney has been unashamed to declare that it has a very clear LGBTQ agenda. Our leadership over there has been so welcoming to like my like not at all secret gay agenda. And then all that like momentum that I felt like that sense of I don't have to be afraid to like let's have these two characters kiss. Let's in the background. This, like I was just wherever I could just basically adding queerness to like the, if you see anything queer in the show, I'm proud of them. But like I, I just was like no one would stop me and no one was trying to stop me. Outside of the Marvel Universe, the new Buzz Lightyear movie produced by Disney and Pixar also has a very clear LGBTQ agenda. Initially, there was a lesbian kiss scene that was cut from the movie. But directly in response to Ron DeSantis passing a law in Florida that prohibits teachers from talking about sexuality to young children, which the left calls the Don't Say Gay Bill, the lesbian kiss scene was restored to the movie as a form of protest. The report goes on to add that Pixar and Disney reportedly had cut a kiss between the two characters, but it's now been restored following the Walt Disney Company's revelation that they were opposed to the Florida bill aiming to prevent instruction of gender identity and orientation to school kids between kindergarten and third grade. When asked about the controversy surrounding the Lightyear movie, actor Chris Evans, the voice of Buzz Lightyear, simply attacked and belittled the critics. 
whenever you do something about representation or diversity or whatever, you you always push back. I mean, what would you, I mean, how would you counter that, I suppose? Well, I mean, the real truth is those people are idiots. I mean, I think throughout history, you can see every time there's been social advancement as we wake up. I mean, the the American story, the human story is, is one of constant social awakening and growth. And that's, that's what makes us good. And, and, you know, when that happens, there's always going to be people who are afraid and unaware and, and trying to hold on to what was before. Those people die off like dinosaurs. And so, you know, I think the, the goal is to pay them no mind, march forward and, and, and embrace the growth that makes us human. The LGBTQ movement has also taken over the United States military. During Pride Month, the U.S. Marines tweeted this, along with an image of rainbow bullets on a helmet. Throughout June, the USMC takes hashtag pride in recognizing and honoring the contributions of our LGBTQ service members. We remain committed to fostering an environment free from discrimination and defend the values of treating all equally with dignity and respect. If you like this video, subscribe to help spread the truth. Similarly, the U.S. Air Force tweeted this, along with this image of a woman with a rainbow-colored arm. Happy Pride Month! We are the best, hashtag USAF, by leveraging the diverse backgrounds and strengths of each member of our total force. We are committed to making the hashtag Air Force a place where all can reach their full potential, hashtag Pride, hashtag Pride Month. And likewise, the NSA tweeted this, Happy Pride Month from the NSA. We are celebrating all the diverse voices that contribute to our mission because having pride in who you are and what you do is intelligent. Hashtag pride is intelligent. Hashtag gov pride. And likewise, the Department of Homeland Security tweeted this. Today, we mark the beginning of hashtag pride month. During Pride, we recognize and celebrate the members of the LGBTQI plus community. We also mark the progress that has been made and the work that still needs to be done to ensure safety and equality for LGBTQI plus people. FaZe Clan is the most popular esports and entertainment organization in the world. During Pride Month, the organization tweeted, Happy Pride Month! Sending love to our LGBTQ plus friends, family, and community. In response, one of the Muslim members of FaZe Clan, FaZe Virus, tweeted, Just to clarify that I don't support any kind of LGBTQ or anything similar, even if FaZe does. I'm a Muslim. Immediately, there was an enormous amount of backlash against FaZe Virus, and FaZe Virus ended up caving and deleting his tweet. And many fans got very upset with him over this. So FaZe Virus immediately had to delete this tweet. He was getting so much backlash and there was thousands and thousands of people calling for him to be canceled and dropped from FaZe Clan for posting this. No matter your religion, you cannot be allowed to believe there is anything wrong with homosexuality. Once a fringe, non-normative part of society, drag queens are now so normative that they are appearing in libraries and schools and having an enormous influence on countless young children. Drag Queen Story Hour is now a normal event at many libraries. The News Hour's Julia Griffin explains. At the Adams Morgan Community Center in Washington, D.C. recently, parents and their tiny tots sat patiently, riveted by a storybook and its reader. He shuffled into Bear's room. Wake up, Bear, mumbled Mole. Spring is here. This is Drag Queen Story Hour. It's your classic children's reading program with a twist. The day's literary leader is a larger-than-life drag queen. And drag queens now regularly perform at schools and in front of young children. It was all a surprise to the assembled students who apparently had no idea that they were about to get a drag show from one of their teachers. And we have footage of that. Let's play just a little bit of that, that footage. What the? <laughs> that drag queens are now such a normal part of our culture and society is a clear sign of just how far the LGBTQ movement has come in taking over essentially every aspect of our lives. Pete Buttigieg was a 2020 Democratic presidential candidate and is now U.S. Secretary of Transportation. Buttigieg is married to another man, Chaston, and has adopted two children. Regarding the normality and validity of his marriage, 
Buttigieg said this on CNN with Jake Tapper. If he's got time to fight against Disney, I don't know why he wouldn't have time to help safeguard marriages like mine. This is really, really important to a lot of people. It's certainly important to me. I, I started my day as, as I try to do on weekends. I, I try to give Chaston a little bit of a break and do breakfast with, with both of our, our twins. Uh, and uh, uh, that alone, that's no small thing. Uh, as every parent of, of small kids knows, uh, it was one of those days where the tray table wasn't quite fitting into the high chair. And uh, I'm trying to make sure that they're busy enough with their little cereal puffs to give me enough time to to chop up the banana and get the formula ready. And, and it just, I don't know, that half hour of my morning had me thinking about how much I depend on and count on my spouse every day. Our marriage deserves to be treated equally. I don't know why this would be hard for a senator or a congressman. I, I don't understand how such a majority of, of House Republicans voted no on our marriage on as recently as Tuesday, hours after I was in a room with a lot of them talking about transportation policy, having what I thought were perfectly normal conversations with, with many of them on that subject, only for them to go around the corner and say that uh, that my marriage doesn't deserve to continue. If they don't want to spend a lot of time on this, they can vote yes and move on. And that would be really reassuring for a lot of families around America, including mine. How do we as Christians withstand and fight back against the LGBTQ takeover of virtually every aspect of the culture, government, and entertainment? We need to constantly remember that not teaching children and Christians biblical truth is essentially the same as letting the LGBTQ movement win over their minds. Since the LGBTQ movement is now everywhere and inescapable. And what they argued was that they needed to get images of gays and gayness into the public arena. They, they needed to have, you know, TV shows and, and commercials and, you know, out athletes and actors and actresses. And they needed to use this. They, they, need, they, they used an illustration and, and they talked about turning on a shower, right? And just overwhelming the straight world with this so that after a while they get used to being wet. And we need to be actively teaching all children and Christians the objective, universal, necessary truth of God's Word. My responsibility as a father is to raise, train, hone, aim, and launch the arrows that God has given me. And there are those who seem to think that I should take them when they're undeveloped twigs and launch them into a system that will hone them and sharpen them and aim them back at me. Newsflash, I'm raising an army, an army of intercontinental ballistic missiles. And one day the silo is gonna open over my home. And when it does, there will be missiles launched to impact this world who have been trained armed and home in my home and not by Caesar.